as far as utilized in the Quran that we have memorized and revised as means of ruqya and shifa this is why the Quran was revealed as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-isra وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا We send down of the Qur'an what is considered a shifa, cure, and mercy, but for whom? For the believers. Cure, يعني, if I have flu, can I use the Qur'an instead of the antibiotic? Can I use it when I, whenever I have a stomach? Can I use it whenever I have headache? You can always use it even with cancer. But I'm not saying that quit taking the medications or do not go to check on yourself with the proper physician. But what I'm saying is the Qur'an is the best means of ruqya. Whenever you see somebody of your family members or your beloved ones, and you know that he's sick, place your hand on the spot that is aching of his body and recite any part of the Qur'an. You see, the last three chapters are known as al muawwidat the best means of seeking protection with Allah against the evil of everything, shaitan, humans, etc. Surah Al-Fatiha is the greatest surah at large. And Al-Imam Al-Bukhari collected a hadith that is narrated by Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, in which he says, we were once traveling on an expedition, and we approached some people who asked them for food, they refused. For water, they abstained. So we moved away, and soon after we left, they sent a girl, she came running, and she said, Inna Sayyid al Hayy Salim." فَهَمْ مِنْكُمْ مَرْرَاقٍ The leader of this clan or tribe who refused to host the Muslims got bitten by a scorpion. And they tried every remedy with him, every medication and antidote. Nothing have worked. So he was about to expire. They said, why don't you go and check with these guys? Maybe they have some talisman or ta'weez, amulets. So one of them said, yes I do. And he went, and he recited a ruqyah on this man. The hadith says, and when he did so, فَكَأَنَّمَا نَشَطَ مِنْ عِقَالِ What happens when you tie a camel? The camels, by nature, very aggressive, and they like to be free. They don't like to be tied up. What happens when the robe is untied? Do they stay in the same place? or run away. So this man, after he was tied up, and he was about to die, after the ruqya, as if he was an untied camel, he ran off. So he got up, and he was cured immediately. So the man was very impressed, the tribal leader, and he decided to reward the group of Muslims, as he promised. He gave them a herd of sheep, about 30 sheep, plenty of milk and so on. When they collected that, they said, we cannot use any of that before we ask the Prophet ﷺ because you never know whether this is all right or not. We don't know what we did, whether it was okay or haram. So when they went to the Prophet ﷺ, he approved it. Not only that, he said, give me a share of that as well. It's a halal earning. And he asked the guy, the companion who recited this ruqya and said, what made you know that it is ruqya? And he smiled, which is a sign of approval. Umar ibn al-Khattab used to give ruqya always by simply reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Who amongst us, when he has sore throat, he puts his hand on his throat and he recites, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ وَقُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ وَقُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Ayat al-Kursi Ayat al-Kursi is the greatest ayah of the Qur'an. In the retreat, inshallah, we'll be speaking about it in details, almost for two hours. And the verses of reciting this ayah, and it's one of the best means of ruqya, and to undo the magical spell, and to protect against the evil eye, along with the last three chapters, which are known as al-mu'awwidat. So the Quran is also a shifa.